Proto-Indo-European accent refers to the accentual system of the Proto-Indo-European language. Topic: <laughs> Description. Proto-Indo-European pi is usually reconstructed as having had variable lexical stress. The placement of the stress in a word, the accent, was not predictable by its phonological rules. Stressed syllables received a higher pitch than unstressed ones, so pi is often said to have had pitch accents similar to modern-day Japanese. This should not be confused with the other meaning of the term, pitch accent, which refers to a system of one or two syllables per word having one of at least two unpredictable tones, the tones of any other syllables being predictable. Pi accent could be mobile so it could change place throughout the inflectional paradigm. This quality persisted in Vedic Sanskrit and Ancient Greek, as in the declension of athematic nouns. Pi asterisk pods foot, step pi nom. Sg. Asterisk pods greater than Sanskrit pt, Ancient Greek pus. Pi gen. Sg. Asterisk pedes greater than Sanskrit padas, Ancient Greek podos. Pi acc. Sg. Asterisk potum, greater than Sanskrit p dam, ancient Greek poda, or in the conjugation of athematic verbs compare Sanskrit root present first person sg. emi, first person plural imas. Otherwise, the accent was placed at the same syllable throughout the inflection. Nouns are divided into baritones if they are accented on the first syllable and oxytones if they are accented on the last syllable. Pi baritone asterisk wkos wolf greater than Sanskrit nom. Sg. V. Cas. Gen. Sg. V. Casia. Nom. Place. V. Cas. Pi oxytone asterisk sunus sun greater than Sanskrit nom. Sg. Sunus. Gen. Sg. Sunos. Nom. Place. Sunavispi accent was also free so it could stand on any syllable in a word, which was faithfully reflected in the Vedic Sanskrit accent the later classical Sanskrit had a predictable accent. Pi asterisk b arrow of nose carried greater than Vedic baramanas. Pi asterisk d oreyati holds greater than Vedic daryati. Pi asterisk nemasyati worships greater than Vedic namasyati. Pi asterisk h rud rose red greater than Vedic radiras. one can see, the placement of the reconstructed pi accent is reflected in Vedic Sanskrit basically intact. According to the reflex of the Pi accent, Indo-European languages are divided into those with free accent preserved, either directly or indirectly, and those with fixed or bound accent. Free accent is preserved in Vedic Sanskrit of modern Indo-Iranian languages, according to some in Pashto, Ancient Greek, Balto-Slavic and Anatolian. In Proto-Germanic, free accent was retained long enough for Werner's law to be dependent on it, but later, stress was shifted to the first syllable of the word. Topic. Reflexes The Vedic accent is generally considered the most archaic, fairly faithfully reflecting the position of the original Pi accent. Avestan manuscripts do not have written accent, but we know indirectly that at some period the free Pi accent was preserved e.g. Avestan asterisk r is devoiced yielding hour before voiceless stops and after the accent, if the accent was not on the preceding syllable, asterisk r is not devoiced. Ancient Greek also preserves the free pi accent in its nouns see ancient Greek accent, but with limitations that prevent the accent from being positioned farther than the third syllable from the end next from the end if the last vowel was long. However, Greek is almost completely worthless for reconstructing the pi accent in verbs, because other than in a few cases it is consistently positioned as far to the left as the rules allow. Proto-Germanic initially preserved the pi free accent, with some innovations. In the last stage of Proto-Germanic, the accent was replaced by a stress accent on the first syllable of the word, but prior to that it left its traces in the operation of Werner's law. Anatolian languages show traces of the old pi accent in the lengthening of the formerly accented syllable. Compare pi asterisk doru tree, wood, greater than Hittite, Luian taru, Pi asterisk wooder, water greater than Hittite watar, but pi asterisk wedor waters collective greater than Hittite wider. Some Balto-Slavic languages also retain traces of the free pi accent. 
For the reconstruction of the Proto-Balto-Slavic accent, the most important evidence comes from Lithuanian, from Latvian traditionally Lithuanian is thought as more relevant, but that role is being increasingly being taken over by Latvian, and from some Slavic languages, especially Western South Slavic languages and their archaic dialects. The Balto-Slavic accent is continued in the Proto-Slavic accent. Accentual alternations in inflectional paradigms both verbal and nominal are also retained in Balto-Slavic. It used to be held that Balto-Slavic has an innovative accentual system, but nowadays, according to some researchers, Balto-Slavic is taking a pivotal role in the reconstruction of the Pi accent see below. Indirect traces of the Pi accent are said to be reflected in the development of certain sounds in various branches. For the most part, however, these are of limited, if any, utility in reconstructing the Pi accent. <inaudible> Unaccented words Some Pi lexical categories could be unaccented clitics. These are chiefly particles pi ke and greater than Vedic ca, Latin k, ancient Greek te and some forms of pronouns pi moi to me greater than Vedic me. Vedic Sanskrit evidence also indicates that the Proto-Indo-European verb could be unaccented in some syntactical conditions, such as in finite position in the main clause but not sentence initially, where verbs would bear whatever accent they would have borne in subordinate clauses. The same is true of vocatives, which would be deaccented unless they appeared sentence initially. <laughs> Interpretation No purely phonological rules for determining the position of pi accent have been ascertained for now. Nevertheless, according to the traditional doctrine, the following can be said of the pi accentual system: pi thematic nominals and thematic verbal stems all had fixed accent, i.e., on the same syllable throughout the paradigm, which was inherited in all attested daughter languages, although there exist some uncertainties regarding the simple thematic present. Some athematic nominals and verb stems also had fixed accent chiefly on the root, but most had alternating, mobile accent, exhibiting several characteristic patterns, in all of them the surface accent was to the left in one group of inflected forms nomino-accusative of nominals, active singular of verbs, and to the right in the rest. These facts are often interpreted as being the result of the interplay between individual morphemes, each of which belonged, unpredictably, to one of several accentual classes in pi. According to this view, endings and stems could all be underlyingly accented or not, the leftmost underlying accent surfaced, and the words with no underlying accent were accented by default on the leftmost syllable. <laughs> Modern theories Traditionally the Pi accent has been reconstructed in a straightforward way, by the comparison of Vedic, Ancient Greek and Germanic, e.g. Pi asterisk ph ter father from Sanskrit pit, ancient Greek pater, Gothic phaedar. When the position of the accent matched in these languages, that was the accent reconstructed for pi proper. It was taken for granted that the Vedic accent was the most archaic and the evidence of Vedic could be used to resolve all the potentially problematic cases. It was shown, however, by Vladislav Ilyich Svidik in 1963 that the Balto-Slavic accent does not match the presupposed Pi accent reconstructed on the basis of Vedic and Ancient Greek. The Greek Vedic baritones correspond to Balto-Slavic fixed paradigms, and Greek Vedic oxytones correspond to Balto-Slavic mobile paradigms. Moreover, in about a quarter of all cognate Vedic and Ancient Greek etymons accents do not match at all, e.g. Pi asterisk h egros field greater than ancient Greek agros Vedic aras. Pi asterisk suikiros father in law greater than ancient Greek hikairos Vedic svasuras. Pi asterisk ko teros which greater than ancient Greek pateros Vedic kataras. Recently, Russian linguists Vladimir Dybo and Sergey Nikolaev have been reconstructing the pi accentual system as a system of two tones, plus and minus, probably high and low tone. Proto-Indo-European would thus not have, as is usually reconstructed, a system of free accent such as is found in Vedic, but instead every morpheme would be inherently high or low i.e. dominant or recessive, as it cannot be known for sure how those features were phonetically actually manifested, and the position of the accent would be later determined in various ways in the various daughter languages depending on the combinations of plus and minus morphemes, so that Vedic would certainly not be the most archaic language. 
Many correspondences among IE languages, as well as certain phenomena in individual daughters dependent on pi tones, should corroborate this interpretation. Daibo lists several shortcomings in the traditional approach to the reconstruction of pi accent. Amongst others, incorrect belief in the direct connection between the pi accent and oblaut, which in fact does not explain the position of pi accent at all. Usually, for example, it is thought that zero grade should be unaccented, but that is evidently not valid for pi e WKOS wolf, sept seven, etc. according to the traditional reconstruction. Furthermore, Daibo claims that there is no phonological, semantic or morphological reason whatsoever for the classification of certain word to a certain accentual type, i.e. the traditional model cannot explain why Vedic V cas wolf is baritone and Vedic devas deity is oxytone. According to Daibo, such discrepancies can only be explained by presupposing lexical tone in pi. See also Proto-Indo-European noun see especially section on athematic nouns and oblot accentual patterns Notes References Kapovic, Mate. 2008. Uvodu Indorisku Lingvistiku in Croatian. Zagreb, Matika Hrvatska. ISBN 978-953-150-847-6. Ranko Matasovic. 2008. Poredbenepovijezna Gramatika Hrvatskoga Jizika in Croatian. Zagreb, Matika Hrvatska. ISBN 978-953-150-840-7. Sergei Nikolaev 1989. The Balto-Slavic Accentuation System and its Indo-European Origins. PDF. Historical Accentology and the Comparative Method in Russian. Moscow, Naka, 46-109. Donald A. Ring 2006. From Proto-Indo-European to Proto-Germanic. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-928413-9. S. Starostin, V. Dybo and S. Nikolaev 1978. A Tonological Hypothesis on the Origin of Paradigmatic Accent Systems. PDF. Estonian Papers in Phonetics. Tallinn, 16-20. Roman Sukic, Introduction to Proto-Indo-European and Balto-Slavic Accentology. Newcastle upon Tyne, Cambridge Scholars Publishing, 2013.